Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, before we start, we have some Muslims are being angry already. As an example, we have a person, his name Ibrahim Musa say, Hello CP, I'm here to debunk your lies. You know, uh, all of you Muslims can debunk my lies. Actually, there's one of you, he made like a hundred something lies. And just yesterday we found out that you can be a pimp in Islam and the video is listed down in the previous video if people like to watch it. It doesn't say that, CP. <laughs> so when the Abdul, they are together and they are not debating a Christian, they say things. They don't say when they are, I mean, when they are alone, the answers, the debate, the, the, the conversation is different. It turned to be, it's true. The Christian prince was not lying, brother. You can be a pimp in Islam. Yes, brother. The link is the previous video. Somebody posted in the chat. I'm not going to make a video about it because it's not worth it. There are a bunch of kids. All of them, including your prophet. You know, to be a Muslim is to be a person with no brain. Brahim says, Hello, ZB. I'm here to debunk your lies. Okay. Should I go now? Are we done for today? Oh, guys, I'm, I'm going to leave. That's it. Because Ibrahim Musa is here to debunk your liars. Your liars. Liars? It's, it's me who's talking only. <laughs> you must be one of a kind. Anyway, let him go. Just a little Abdul. Here we have a big Abdul. This big Abdul is going to teach us something beyond your imagination. This is not Zakir Naik. You know, Zakir Naik, you know, he speaks differently. Like this guy is covering his mouth, not because he spit like Zakir Naik, no, no. This guy, he spit lies beyond fantasy. But anyway, don't blame him. Blame the one who told him the lies. Brother and sister, I'm going to introduce for you our brother Mufti Mink, and he's very good. Uh, uh, Zakir, he's better than you. First of all, Allah he made us equal. Hey, we hold on. What do you mean equal? The Quran said, "Wama fadlna ba'dahu al-bad." What the heck is that Arabic? Christian Prince, you don't speak Arabic. Like what the heck? Okay, forget about Zakir Naik now. Mufti Mink is going to tell you a story. If you are a man, it's going to hit you on your balls. If you are a female, uh, <clears throat> it's going to hit you... Forget about it. <laughs> hey, uh, Mufti Mink, what is that, man? Where do you... I mean, you, you may... You know, you are a sheikh for a reason. We have to admit. I mean, they made you a sheikh for a reason. Tell us, please, about something which is amazing. Go. Which is amazing. What the heck? He is copying me. I thought nobody can make Quran like the Quran. I say amazing, he say amazing. Unbelievable. Allah knows that which was not going to happen and will not happen. It Look at this. Allah knows what will not going to happen. Solve this problem for me. Allah knows what will not go to happen. <sighs> you know, I apply for a TV station to work as a weather news, you know, uh, guy. And I was going to tell them the news about the weather which will not happen. And they asked me, okay, tell us what will not happen. I said, everything will happen, the opposite. <laughs> Allah, he knows what will not happen. Are you serious? Like, come on. 
and look at his hand and look at his face. I mean, the Discovery Channel, Allah, he knows what will not happen. How I can deal with this now? We have a true, true, true God. He know what will not happen. Okay, uh, tell us about what will not uh, ha, 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 happen. What happened? If it were to happen, how it would have happened? Allah knows it already. Can I give you an example from the Quran? Please, please don't. Like, look at them. He is looking down at as like he is looking at a bunch of kids. Can I give you an example in the Quran? Look at his teeth. Look at his is coming out. Go and tell you an example from the Quran. Like, give us, give us an example of Quran. We are desperate for the example. What are you talking about? All of us, we cannot wait. We cannot live with it. You want to give, give us an example about what will not happen? Remember, the example from the Quran now, he will tell us about something will Allah knows it will not happen. Uh, okay, tell us. In Surah Al-Kahf, and I'm sure we read it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about certain incidents that happened between Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr. Al-Khidr. And Allah speaks about one of them where... He, now he will start singing, so I will, I will skip the singing. You know, I'm not interested in American Idol. Young boy was killed by Al-Khidr. And Musa alayhi salam says... Now he will sing. Okay, skip the singing. Singing competition. No purpose. We are not allowed to kill just because you might have had a disagreement. So what we skipped here, Al Khadr, who Muslim cannot tell us who is this Al Khadr. His name is a green, and the reason his name is a green because this guy he drank from the water of life. I don't know how many of you watched the fountain, the movie, it's called uh, uh, The Pirate of the Caribbean, where they go and they find the fountain of youth. Where is the fountain of youth? Here we go. So in the hadith here, we see the story. As you know, most of the stories of Muhammad can be found in the hadith, not uh, in the Quran. So here it says that there is uh, Musa's, uh, the story is simple. Musa's, uh, he said, uh, I am the most, most knowledgeable person in, in the sight of Allah. Allah get upset because, you know, Allah he get upset always. So he told him, Brother Fitr, Musa, he said that I am the most knowledgeable person in the sight of Allah. Allah heard him. So he said to Musa, you are not. So Musa said, who is better than me, Allah? So Allah, he sent him to Prophet Al-Khidr. Like, what the heck? Al-Khidr, he knew more than Musa. Yeah. So Allah now decided to send Musa for a training and schooling by the teacher Al-Khidr. And Allah, he told him to take with him a wheel. I mean, it's very easy to carry wheel at that time, you know. Here in the translation, they say it's a fish, you know, but there's no fish really. In the Arabic, it says hoot, hoot. So here, uh, simply, uh, 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 Musa, he took a person, a, a servant with him. His name is Noon, which Noon is mean a whale too. So I mean, it's, look, look at the coincidence. They carry a whale and the servant, his name is a whale. What the heck? True story. So when they carry uh, Allah, uh, Musa, he told Allah, okay, how am I going to find the guy? He says, when you lose your Noon, which means your whale, this is where you will find him when you lose him but the whale is dead <laughs> hello so anyway so they arrive with the uh, Musa's and Yeshua bin Nun he is the son of the whale you see Nun you see let, let me zoom in let me zoom in most of you are very old I'm the only young person here you know 16 not even 18 alhamdulillah so here his name is Yeshua bin Nun look at this name and then they carried their wheel with them, brother, till they reached the rock. 
Look, look, look. I mean, the guy is coming all the way from Israel. I don't know at that time, maybe he was in Egypt too. We don't know. And he came all the way until they found the rock. Like the, the, the road, you know, the road in their way, there's no rocks. I mean, look at the map. It's very simple. The guy he go from Egypt, maybe, Moses, all the way to Bahrain. And there they found the rock. It's very simple. Like, you know, if I want to drive to visit your friend, let us see your friend, he lives in Spain. What he need to tell you? Keep driving until you find the rock. I mean, do you see the GPS of Allah? So, Moshe, Moshe, Habimi Moshe, he, uh, you know, he reached the rock, okay? And then they rested there. Look at this mistake. Why you do that? Why you do that next to the rope? Do you have an idea what this rope would do? Okay. And then they rested there. Musa has put his head down and he slept. Sufyan, the sub narrator, the, look in Islam, there is sub narrator, there is subtitle, there is sub idiot, there is sub prophet, there is sub sahaba. There's a lot of sub. The only sub they don't have is sub intelligent. That somebody other than Amr said, like this is sub narrator other than Amr? Oh, okay. I, I got it. Okay. Said at the rook, there was a water spring called Al Hayat. Hayat in Arabic means life. And none come in touch with its water. But becomes alive. Eh? That explains why my grandfather, I mean, he stayed alive for tens of thousands of years. He was living next to the rock. And I asked him, hey, grandfather, why you are just living next to this rock? He said, I, I cannot tell you. Look how selfish he is. He didn't want to tell me that next to that rock, there's the fountain of life. None who get in touch with, they don't need to drink it. No, no, you drink it, too much. Grass will grow over your body. It's because too much life. You just touch it, touch it, brother. None get in touch with it, but become alive. So some of the water of the spring fail over the fish. A moment of silence. The water of life fall over the fish. The fish now is moving. I see the fish tail is moving. The fish, she opened her eyes. The fish is breathing. The fish is smoking cigarette. The fish is looking at the sky saying, thank you, water of life. True story. Who can debunk? What is the guy is named Ibrahim Ibn Musa? You would like to debunk me? What happened to this guy, Ibrahim Ibn Musa? He said he want to debunk that on my liars. Are you there, Ibrahim Ibn Musa? What, what is Ibrahim? Ah, Ibrahim Ibn Musa, he is now counting fish. Hey, Ibrahim. Yeah, Ibrahim. هل أنت بشر أم بهيم؟ Are you there, Ibrahim? Where is the one who will destroy my lies? Hello. شنو هذا؟ All of those stories are true stories. Remember, Prophet Muhammad never lie, never, never. I mean, actually, Muhammad he, you know, uh, uh, after what happened, you know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what happened. He decided to do blood test. They took him to the laboratory. The laboratory, all the computer explode, explode, because everything in the blood of the Prophet was positive, including HIV. Remember, brother. 
You remember when the guy, we said to him, your prophet, he took an oath in a, in a, in a book and he don't believe in it. Supposedly, the Muslims say that the Bible is corrupt. I said to him, so how we take an oath in the book if the book is corrupt? He says he was trying to be positive. <laughs> it's good to be positive. It's very good. <laughs> Say, I believe in you and I, I believe in the one who sent you, but I don't believe in you. <laughs> okay, that is positive. True story. Who wants some coffee? Very, very heavy duty coffee. Because this is a story, you need heavy, heavy duty. You cannot drink normal coffee with this. I mean, come on, you need something to make you able to swallow the story. Okay, so we go back to the story. So some of the water of the spring fall over the fish. Hold on, hold on. Can you tell us how in the world the water jump from the spring to the fish? I mean, the fish in the basket. And the basket is next to the rock. How the water of the... Do you think this is a waterfall? Ah, it's a waterfall. Uh -huh. I was wondering, I was going to draw a picture of this, but you know, I don't want people to start leaving the chat because I noticed since I start drawing the drop, like I will have 2000 people watching. The second I start drawing, people leave, you know, not because they don't like it, because some they have heart attack due to the beauty of my drawing. Unbelievable. Anyway, so brother and sister. Some of the water of the spring fall over the fish. <clears throat> so it moved. Boing, like what the heck? And slipped out of the basket. Look at this true story. And entered into the sea. Like hold on. The spring of the water in the land. How she slipped into the sea. Like, what the heck? We need help here. It's a spring of water in the middle of nowhere. And the spring of the water is next to a rock. How she slipped to the sea? Ibrahim? The one who wanna debunk my lies, are you there? It's your time, brother. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> you know what? I will tell you one. This is a true story, by the way, true story. Once I was in, in Arizona, you know, which is in the border of Brazil, you know. And, you know, I said to myself, I'm going to, you know, like uh, stop next. There is a rock there. And, you know, next to the rock, you know, there is, uh, I found, uh, you know, you know, you know the thing. So anyway, I said to myself, like, you know, let me do some, you know, as you know. So anyway, but uh, when I didn't like those things, you know, and, you know, and then I decided let me take a break and rest down next to the, you know, and then I have a case of sardine with me, you know, the, the you know, the, you know, the canned sardine. I put it next to me and then a drop of water fell from the fountain of life on the sardine, which is inside the sardine. And then the sardine moved, like, book, 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 book. And then the sardine stepped oh the way to the sea like what the heck this is brother and sisters present for us the knowledge of Allah I mean come on if you cannot believe it something wrong with you I'm telling you from now on something 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 wrong with you something wrong with your battery with the brain you know you must be stupid if you don't believe in this first it's, it's very clear Secondly, it's very scientific. Number three, there's a lot of witnesses. This is the most important thing about the story. There's a lot of witnesses. <laughs> oh boy. Coffee time, so I can swallow the story. So let us go back to Sheikh Mufti Mink, who is telling us, Allah, he know what we know not. Look at the face, brother. Look at this. The truth. The truth between his hands. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Allah, for the storytellers you gave us. Otherwise, we would be laughing at what? By your help, 
we are able to accomplish such a comedy. You know, I think we should give time to Mufti Mink to give us more details. Uh, go, Mufti. What happened next? or a difference you have no right to take away the life that Allah gave look this is Islam so Muhammad he says I will kill everybody I have been ordered to kill all mankind and to convert and now you have no right to kill to take a life of some uh, what the heck what's wrong with this Musa it sound like this Musa is not a Muslim we did not join ISIS yet who gave life who gave life Allah Allah look at this answer straight clear with the proofs okay how can you take away life that Allah gave if Allah wants he will take that life away he has see if Allah wants he will take the life okay just take a note of this Musa says to al Khudr to al Khudr why you why you kill the boy a boy playing with the with the kids why you killed him how you take a life of innocent boy you know you have no right to do so if Allah wants to take his life he will take his life not you Okay, what Al Khadr is said? Has more power than you and I. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So Al Khadr says, "Look, look. Now Al Khadr is going to show Moses that he is an, a certified idiot." <laughs> I'm really, what the heck is that? Al Khadr he said to Moses, "Look." At that moment, brother, you don't want to be Al Khadr because Al Khadr he will look now like a fool. Look what he, how will he get him busted? Hey Ali, are you there? Look, Al Khadr is debunking Musa now. Look at this. Listen carefully. You don't know what I've done. Just leave it. Look at this answer. You do not know what I've done. Just leave it. Leave it. Like what? Uh, okay, why? Why? What happened? It was from Allah inspired. Subhan. It was from Allah inspired. Okay, Allah inspired Khadr to kill the boy. Why? Allah. And then he explains that had this child grown older, he would have been a source of misfortune for his parents. Look, 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 look. Do you remember how the video started? He want to give us an example of Allah. He knew what will not happen. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you remember? So now we killed that child. So it will not happen that he will do him a mis misfortune. <laughs> so I have <laughs> Look, look at this intelligence. Allah, he knew what will not happen. How by killing the boy? So now the boy, he will not do mischief to his mother or and his parents. This is the, this is super intelligent example. Secondly, Abdul, look, you know, Muslims, uh, Mohammedans, black stone kissers. If you are going around the stone right now, just freeze for a second. Let me get the remote control. Okay, let's stop. Listen. As long as this boy, he would do misfortune to his parents, and then Allah inspired Al Khadr to kill the boy. Why only that boy? I mean, how many boys in this earth they are not good to their parents? What is this? And isn't it you, Muslim, you say that Allah will punish you for committing a crime? The guy did not commit a crime yet, and he is a Muslim. You punish the boy and he is just a little boy who did nothing wrong for a crime he will do in the future. That's mean all of us who should be killed because all of us will do something wrong. Either be the parents, to our neighbors, to our, you know, I mean, whoever you do wrong. There's no human being did not do something wrong. Here you see that the story is just a stupid story from a fool. He copied from legions before Muhammad. If you go and search the story of Gilgamesh, you will see that there is a king or a leader, whatever he is. He searched for 
the you know the secret of life he want to live forever so he keep going he go and he meet a guy his name is al-khadr al-khadr mean mr green and why they call him mr green because simply he drank from the fountain of youth so when he sit even in the ground even if the grass is dead the grass will become a green so they call him Mr. Green. You do not need to be a genius that Muhammad is a fraud. Adopting fairy tale stories exist before him. And this is actually conquer Islam because the reason for killing cannot be accepted for a second. First of all, you hurt the family because now they don't know why you killed the person. Secondly, if those family are Muslim, Al Khadr should be killed now because he killed a Muslim for no reason, which means Al Khadr himself should be under the rule of Allah and Islam, should be killed for killing a child. Number three, assuming that the person he received inspiration from Allah to kill the boy, what the accomplishment? What happened exactly? At least if the boy, he did something wrong and you killed him, his family will not be the same sad as you kill him now because he was a bad person. You cause sadness for this family forever. So you wanted to save them from what exactly? From being, having a bad child? And here we notice again that Muhammad is a fraud. Why? When a child, he died and he was an infant. infant I mean how small he is infant he went to a funeral with his wife Ayusha she was a cute and young very young she is a kid but she is smarter than the full Muhammad so Aisha she said well you know what there is a happiness you know for this child okay why he is a happiness because he will go to heaven for he commit no sin and never even reached the age of sin. Muhammad, he said to Aisha, stop being stupid. Allah created people of hell when they are in the backbone of their father. Remember, Muhammad, he believed, according to his Quran, that the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone. And this is proving to be accurate according to science, you know. There is a guy, he lost his spine, you know. They took it off. He was having orgasm in the refrigerator. Like they took his, they took his spine off and off, I mean, after he died. And they put it in the refrigerator, you know. And uh, he was having, or, the, the sperm was coming all over, like, you know, all over the place. They opened the refrigerator the second day, the refrigerator was, uh, you know, covered by sperm. Yeah, because it was too small, man. This guy was very horny, I mean, before he died. True story. And the Muslim here, they, you know, they lie when they say from their father loins, you know, it says backbone, aslai bi abayhim. So, Allah Messenger, she said to him, Aisha, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise. Okay, why, why? For it commit no sin, nor he had reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, Prayer adventure, it may be otherwise because Allah created for paradise those who are fit for it, while He created what, what they were created and yet in their father uh, backbone, and He created for hell who is going to go to hell when they are in their father backbone. Which means this is what the Muslim called Al Qadr, destiny. Which means if a child he will do go or he will go to heaven 
It's already this tonight for him if he will go to hell or to heaven. It doesn't matter if you commit sin or not. Based on this, the child which Muhammad story says in chapter 18, verse number 74, Al-Khadr, he killed him. He was destined to go to a place and he to do whatever he would do, bad or good, because Muslim believe in destiny. So why you want to kill him if this is the destiny of Allah? Actually, this is the same foolish man, you know, Mufti Mink. In different video, or let me try to find the video. He was speaking about destiny. Let us see if we can find it. Find it. Mufti. Hmm. All right. I guess we are able to find it. Give me a second. <clears throat> Okay. This is Al Khadari. Sorry, this is uh, Mufti Mink. The same person, just to show you how those people they have madness, mental. Uh, I'm talking about those who claim to be Sheikh. When they try to convince you, they forgot what they say. They remind me of Sad Guru, the guy from the Hindu, from India. He say something two minutes after he said the opposite because he assumed that everybody is watching him. He is a he is a is a, is a low IQ and he is the only smart there. So this is uh, uh, Mufti Ming explaining to us the destiny. Go. And they say, well, if Allah's written all of this, then why did he bring me onto the earth? Well, hang on. You don't know your results of your examination. So you have to come onto earth. The fact that Allah knows it and the fact that Allah has written it does not make you a person who should now give up because if that was the case, then obviously you would be the fool. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab. Listen carefully how he can relate himself in the start. And now he's given us example, totally the opposite. Because it's not about the knowing of Allah. It's about Allah writing your destiny. It's a decision he made what you will do. Listen. According to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he had he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, Oh Umar, Oh Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. See? Wow. wow. So these deeds, so it goes to show that you cannot use an, as an excuse the fact that Allah has predestined things. Do you see? Do you see the stupidity? So if it was a predestiny for the guy to be a thief, predestiny for the guy to kill the thief, predestiny for the child to be not good to his parents, why Allah is killing the child? Can you find more stupid cult than this? It's a predestiny. How you punish somebody for a crime he did because you forced him to do it. You see why we are laughing at Muhammad and his religion Muslims are busy. Show me where Jesus says, I'm God worship me. Here we go. This is the Bible. Show me. And then you show him a thousand verse. He will say, oh, this is not, this is not saying that. This is religion. This is God. This is stupidity. I mean, you know, at least if you want to make a religion, at least bring me somebody. He have a little brain, a brain of a sparrow. Well, don't mention the word sparrow because there's a funny story about it. Maybe sometime, other time later, I will tell you about. You know, the bad thing about me, I cannot say a word without finding a story about Muhammad. You will laugh about it. 
and that sometimes is is a is a is a pain, you know, because like come on, this is too much. This is what happened to you when you have too much information and too much knowledge about this garbage. So the guy he is a thief. He said to the caliphate, why you want to punish me if it was a predestiny for me to be a thief, brother? The caliphate, he was ahead of him. You see, it's like it's like a game. This is religion. The caliphate was ahead of him, which means he's smarter and he's tricky. He said, okay, well, it is, was a destiny for you to be a thief, but it was destiny for me to kill you. What the heck? So now you go, you shoot somebody, and the police, they arrest you, and they will say to them, it was a destiny for me to shoot this guy. And then the police guy, he says to me, say to you, it was destiny for me to arrest you. And then the judge, he will say, it was destiny for me to judge you. And then the guy in the jail, he will take you to jail, he will say, destiny for me to jail you. And then they take you to the execution, and he will say, that it was a judgment for me that you do uh, the killing, and I will execute you. And then the, the guy who will put you in the grave, he will say, destiny for me to put you in the grave. And then after that, because in the Islamic country, this is what they do after they bury you. If you are a female, they will rape you. If you are a male, they will rob you. So it was destiny for me to rape you after death. That's so good, man. That's so beautiful. By the way, in case you do not know, in Islamic countries, if the if the if the dead uh, person is a young female, the family usually they send somebody to sleep next to the grave for the first two nights, you know, until her body decayed. Because it happened many times in Morocco, in Egypt, they will go and rape the dead women. Can you believe it? You can search it on YouTube. I search it in sorry in, in Prophet Google. Yesterday they arrested a guy, he is from Morocco, he raped, I think, I don't know, I forget the number, 60 something women, 35 women, I forgot the number. And most of them, they are 60 or 70 years old. And he beat them up, not only he raped them, they go to, to do sport in the, in the park, you know, and he raped them. Very nice religion. Like Muhammad. So here you see, they try to, the, the, the purpose of this video is to show you how amazing is Allah. But what is amazing about this? I can kill a child now and I claim that Allah, he inspired me to kill him. This is very dangerous. Secondly, when the Muslim, they say to you, uh, okay, Jesus, he died in the cross for your sin. But how in the world Islam says that a person who is innocent, shall not pay the price of sin he did not commit. Hmm? First of all, Jesus is not being killed because, uh, let us say, uh, he is going against justice. Jesus, he did not ask the Jews even to arrest him. Jesus, he did not go to the Roman and says, hey, crucify me. I want to die so the Christian will be saved. But what Jesus did is to show us how much he loved for us. And those who believe in Jesus, not only in the cross, they will be redeemed. Because all of us, we are seen as no exception. So the, the Muslim always, they try to spoil the belief of a Christianity. They always try to damage Christianity by adding their own fictions and lies. But you notice that all the lies they put on us, it is in their book. When yesterday somebody posted a link, or I think yesterday, in the in the previous video, showing the three Muslims discussing, or the, this discussing, discussing, yeah, discussing, uh, about Allah giving license to be a pimp. I make a video, and I made many videos about this. The Muslims say, it doesn't say that, CP, lie number whatever. When they talk to each other alone, they agree. Allah gave license for you to be a pimp. Go watch the video. I don't know if the admins, they know the video, they can post it. You got my permission. This is Islam. Why a child, he will go to hell if he never commits sin yet? 
You see, Jesus have the opposite teaching of the stupid Muhammad. Jesus, he said, if you, if you cannot become like those little ones, you know, you will not enter the kingdom of my father, which means the little ones, for sure they are going to heaven. The reason for us not to go to heaven is us committing sin. Muhammad don't agree. Muhammad, he believe in destiny, that because of the destiny, which Allah he destined for you before your creation, you go either to hell or to heaven. And that is a proof that all the belief thing is a, is a joke. Why? Because what the point? If I believe or not, if I was good or bad, if I was a rapist or a gambler, if I was a drunk or not, what is the point? It's the same. At the end of the day, it is destiny. Here there is other hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari showing you the following story. I'm not going to mention how smart Muhammad is, you know, uh, when he said that you will be in your mother womb uh, uh, for 40 days in the form of a sperm, semen. Yeah, you know, this is true. I mean, Muhammad, he knew, Dr. Muhammad, sorry, I, I should not say Muhammad. I mean, either, either you say Prophet Muhammad or Dr. Muhammad or they will kill you. Very visible reason. So when Muhammad he said, and look, the Muslim they say, he's not his name only Muhammad. He is the truthful, the receiver of the truth. Muhammad is a receiver of the truth. Okay, what is the truth? The messenger of Allah, truthful and receiver of the truth, informed us, saying, the creation of you humans gathered in the form of semen in the womb of your mother for 40 days. Yes, brother. Me, myself, I will tell you my experience. I spent 40 days in my mother, Billy, as a semen. I remember the first day as a semen, I said to myself, let me explore the body, you know, so I was going from place to place. I took selfie. At that time, there was no phone. That's why I cannot pause them, you know, but I took selfie using like my uh, DNA, you know, like, you know, ting, like, you know, and uh, brother, you are for 40 days inside your mother as a semen. True. This is science, scientifically accurate. Now, if, if Google said to you that semen can live maximum five days, Google is lying and the prophet is telling the truth. Okay. Then it become a clean of things similar, like in the previous hadith it says, uh, congeal the blood. Here it's a cling thing, depending on the translator, you know, the liar. Then it become a lump. Anyway, this is not that important for her, no. And then, brother, angel will come, and he is going to write for this person his destiny. So look what he'll say. By the one beside whom there is no true God, Verily, one of you would perform the action of the dwellers of Jannah. Jannah, it's not an Arabic word. Muhammad is taught again. He put it in the Quran, which means it's an it's an uh, uh, hiding. Uh, uh, it can work as a uh, let us say garden, uh, but it's a hiding garden or hidden. This is why the Muslim they call the genie genie genie. Uh, uh, because supposedly he is hidden, you cannot see him. This is why in Arabic we call the baby in his mother, uh, uh, is you know, womb, uh, Janine, which means he is hidden too. You know, he's there, but he is hidden. All of this is not Arabic. So, the uh, one of you he is doing the action of people to what of Jannah, which means he will go to heaven. His action is will lead him to heaven. But then, until there is only one cupid between him and the, the heaven, when the for fordained I'm, I'm saying the word correctly fordained because you know my english is very funny like muhammad arabic uh what uh, you, you know this guy remind me of the you know remember the guy who called me he says come on zp you know that my arabic and your arabic is not good like what the heck when uh, when what is for dean for for dean for dean i think would come to pass so the poor guy is working hard to go to Jannah. He is killing Christian, raping their women, chasing the Jews, shouting Allahu Akbar Takbir, kill them. And he spent all his life cleaning his bowls, 
The wind jumping in water have dead water, dead dogs and women blood from period as the prophet following the sunnah, cleaning his ass with the three rocks. As the, the prophet, he said, he, he even by fly fleas from Amazon. Did you see the news about in Imarat they are selling fleas because the prophet, he used to have a fleas in his head. And they are expensive, by the way. Yeah, because we have to follow this. The, the, and now, not only that, in the, in the article, they say it turned to be scientifically healthy. But what the heck? Having fleas, you can search it in Google. I'm not making things up, you know. Buying fleas in, uh, in uh, I don't know if you can find it in English, but can I, I can find it in Arabic. Uh, let me see. Uh, <clears throat> You'll find it in Kuwait, in Emirat, I mean. Okay, I just found one news. One is enough. Hmm. Kuwait lies the increase uh, the, the the length of the hair. What is the price of one lies? <laughs> to open a store in Amazon and I'm going to sell lies for the Abdul how the how does one lies cost <laughs> the other article I saw they are saying that the prophet this is why the prophet he used to have lies I believe a true story true story brother I would love to see the Prince of Emirat and the Prince of Kuwait have a lot of lies when they come to visit us in 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 America, you know, and uh, you know we will we will be so happy to welcome them, you know. Okay, so now you have a few foot one arm distance between you and heaven, and now you want to enter heaven almost, but then what Allah He destined for you will take over and you do the action of people inmate of hell inmate look at this inmate inmate of hell and he entered it so what the point of believing or not believing in Islam it's a stupid religion everything in this religion is a stupid you believe you don't believe you do bad you do good it doesn't matter it is what Allah he wrote for you will decide if you are going to go to heaven or to hell if there is any Abdul here want to refute my lies between two bracket any Muslim anyone so what we learn today a child will be killed for a crime he did not commit yet and not only that, actually, when when the Khadr he killed him, if you see how he killed him, you will you will you will see how Islam justify things, you know, in in a very weird way. <clears throat> Let us go to verse number seventy-four. This is very extremely stupid cult. This is Tafsir al Jalalain. It says here, so they said after leaving the ship, the story of the ship alone is a different story, which we, you know, it's more, more laughable. Making their way in foot until they meet a boy who had not yet reached the puberty plane with the other boys among them, uh, whom his face was fairest. Uh -huh. And then Hal Khadr, he slew him by slitting his throat with a knife. While he lay down in by or by tearing his head off. Look at this, brother. The art of tearing head. With his hands or by smashing his head against the wall. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Wasim saying, uh, Prophet will be in paradise, murders will be in paradise, babies will be in paradise. 
Well, if this is what your prophet said, this is your prophet said too. This is again proving that Muhammad is a fraud. Because if you cannot maintain what you say, you are obviously a fraud. So why he oppose Aisha when she said he will go to heaven? If he will go to heaven anyway. Huh? So your argument is to be used against your prophet because a child, according to Muhammad, he will not go to paradise unless he predestined to go to paradise. And you see, we are giving reference, we are not making a statement. Aisha, she assumed that this boy who is an infant and he is a son of a Muslim family, that's why Muhammad, he prayed on him. As you know, you can't pray in someone unless he's a Muslim. However, Muhammad, he did that pray in people who are not Muslim because he was a hypocrite at that time. He was weak. So Aisha, she said, he will go to heaven. Muhammad, he said, no, not necessarily. For Allah, he destined where he will go before he created them. So your argument is not going to help. Secondly, if we go back to the story of this boy, this boy, he will do mischief to his parents. But as you know, in Islam, if you do that, you will go to heaven still. Why you want to kill the boy? The only reason in Islam to go to hell, like, you know, the Muslim, they say, uh, according to Islam, like, you go to hell, but you will not stay long. Like, you know, let us say, uh, uh, this is why the Muslim, they took from the Aramaic, an idea that there is a Sirat. Sirat is an Aramaic word, which is a bridge. And that bridge have holes in it. So if you are a believer, the bridge will have little tiny holes in it. So you, your, your feet will not fail down in the fire. The more you are a person who commits, let us say, sin, the more your feet will drop down from the bridge. Some even will go all the way to their shoulders and they will be burned. So uh, uh, the Quran says in different verse, وَمَا مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا not a single one of you, but he will enter it. Enter what? Enter hell. And it is a destiny too. Even that is a destiny. Let's put the verse here, hold on. So the Quran is so clear that every single Muslim he will enter hell, but that the the uh, depend how bad they are, supposed he will always stay in hell. But as you see, all of this doesn't make sense because Muhammad he said it clearly, it's a destiny. It has nothing to do with the sin you do, which means even the sin you do, it is sin destiny for you, which means this is the sin of Allah. If you read Muslim translation of a chapter 19, verse number 71, it says, there's not one of you but will pass over it. But the fact this is not true. If we go right now and check, we will see not a single one of you, but he will enter it. Let's go. 1971. Do you see it? There's not one of you, but shall come to it, but shall enter hell. So Islam promised you hell for sure. That is a granted. So put all together. Allah, he destiny for you to commit sin. As an example, one of the favorite sin of Allah topic is fornication why people do fornication Muhammad explained it was a destiny and this is Sahih Sahih Muslim 
Verily, Allah has the fixed has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in, and which he of necessity must commit. There's no choice to commit or not to commit. So why you want to punish him for adultery? If it is you who force him to do adultery. So let us say there's a man, he slept with 10 women and they are not lawful for him. And there's other man, he slept with three women and they are not lawful for him. Both of them, they did not choose how many women they will sleep with. It was a predestiny. So how in the world this religion can be called a religion? Do you see how stupid this cult is? And if a child he is yet born, an infant, he might go to hell because of predestiny. Ibn Kathir, he says, bath over it. You know, okay, hold on. Uh, uh, Wasim, hold on. Guys, Ibn Kathir, he said, Mr. Wasim here, he said, is a Muslim. I guess they are Muslims enter they enter the bathroom the second they enter the bathroom they don't want to follow the steps of the Prophet Ibn Kathir said it says pass over it it is talking about Sirat bridge the word enter is Dukhul look at this genius he is teaching me Arabic they want to enter no Abdul first the Arabic it says which means come to it and drink from it. This is why Warad al Ma he drank from it. The one who watered water, he is drinking from the water. You are just an ignorant like your prophet. Secondly, let us go to Ibn Kathir so we can love together. Shall we? Let us go. Hey Ibn Kathir, how are you? We need you. So we can love more. This is Ibn Kathir. <clears throat> and this is. And now you will say, I don't accept Ibn Kathir. First of all, it says here, this is, remember, this is what you chose for me, this is Ibn Kathir. And this translation is exists in Ibn Kathir, which you chose for me. Do you see the translation saying, it's a decree, must accomplish? Do you see it, or you're blind? It's a decree, okay. What is decree? Let us see. The bridge over hell is like a sharp edge of sword. The first group to cross will pass like a flash of lightning. The second group will pass like wind. The third group will pass like fast horse. The fourth group will pass like a fastest cow. <laughs> and the rest will be pass while the angel will be saying, Oh Allah, save them! Oh Allah, save them! <laughs> so, still, you are burned. You see, the faster you are, the less burning you will suffer from. So, you enter hell. So, simply, the bridge you are talking about is like a barbecue screen. And you are walking over the barbecue screen. And Allah will increase your speed, depend in how much destiny He decides for you. Because as you see, it's a destiny. Uh, uh, okay, this is a good question, actually. Thank you, Mr. Wasim. Guys, look what, uh, what Wasim he did. Oh, hold on. We took the wrong selfie. Guys, this is a very good question, actually. And this question alone is enough to destroy everything about the cult of Muhammad. I remember Wasim is asking the question, trying to refute me, correct? He is not supporting me. Look, let me make it bigger. 
if Allah decide people sin, then why he is going to be angry on a, in a day of judgment at humanity for following shaitan and he will be show up for 50 uh, years? I don't know what does that mean? He will show up for 50 years? What I know that Allah created the sin of mankind and he decided 50 years before he created them. This is a question which is very important. Prove Islam to be false. Why? Because as you said, well, if he is the one who decides their destiny to commit sin, why he is angry and want to punish those who commit sin? Let us go and see a debate between, Abraham, uh, between Adam and Moses. And don't ask me how Adam he met with Moses. Muhammad is a funny man. He come with the stories. So Moses said to Adam, let us find the hadith. The Prophet said, Adam and Moses argued. Adam and Moses. Okay. Don't ask Muhammad how Adam and Moses they met, because according to Islam, all prophets are dead. And actually, the first one will be resurrected is Muhammad but if you read the story of Muhammad saying I will be the first resurrected and I will see a, a Moses holding a, like a, a pole which is very funny so how you will be the first one to be resurrected and Moses is already standing stupidity is amazing so Prophet said Adam and Moses argued each other Moses said to Adam oh Adam you are the father of who disappointed us okay why and turned us out of paradise so obviously Moses he is no Muslim. Muhammad and Muslim got busted. They keep saying to us, Moses himself was a Muslim. But as you see, Moses, he believed in the original sin. This is the original sin. The original sin. Moses commits sin and we are sinners too. But we are following the steps of our father, Adam. So Moses obviously is not a Muslim because you, as you see, Moses, he died. And still he believed that because of Adam, we are out of paradise. Adam said to him, O oh, Moses, Allah favored you with his talk. According to Muslims, he spoke to him directly. And he wrote the Torah for you with his own hand. In case you do not know, Christian and Jews believe that God, he gave only the Ten Commandments to Moses. The rest is not written by Allah. Muslims, they have different fiction story. You know, they have their own fiction story that Allah, he wrote the whole Torah. So imagine how many rocks Moses was carrying. He spent his life carrying rocks. Allah, he right, Moses carried the rock. But it's not important now. Do you blame me for an action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before my creation? Do you see it? People, do you see it? Wasim, do you see it? So, can we blame Adam for his sin? I will read, I will answer you in a second. Can we blame Adam for his sin? According to Adam, no. What according to Muhammad? Muhammad agree with Adam. Look, so Muhammad continues saying, so Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Moses and he repeated that three times as usual. Muhammad is Trinity person. So according to Muhammad, he agree that we cannot blame Adam for his sin, for this sin is a predestiny, and it was a predestiny for him 40 years before his creation. So now we go back to the question which Mr. Wasim he asked, which is a total destruction for the cult of Muhammad. Why Allah will be angry from our sin if our sin written 40 years before we are created, and it was a predestiny. Are we there? Why we will? This is your question, not my question. If Allah decide people sin, then why he is going to be angry? Okay, why Allah is angry from Adam when he commits sin? Wasim now is trying to play game. He is saying Adam meant 
to say, Allah know he was going to do sin. That is a, for, uh, that, my friend, your answer is a fornication. Your answer is an answer of fornication because the story in front of your eyes and instead you are lying about it, shame on you. People read carefully how the Muslim desperate try to fool us, but it doesn't work. Adam meant to say that Allah he know was going to do sin and still decide to create him. No, you are a stupid fool because read again. Are you blind? He is saying to him, do you blame me for a sin? <laughs> you can, which means you can't blame me. Moses is blaming Adam. Adam saying, you cannot blame me. Not because Allah he knew. But because it's a destiny. So if we go with your theory, which is fiction, he says, do you blame me for an action which Allah had written for me? Just to show you, you know, to make it more clear, let us go and see the same hadith with more details. So we love more. Read this one with me and love. And try now better. Musa has held discussion with, uh, uh, with Adam and he said, you are our father. You bereaved us and caused us to come out of paradise. Adam said, you are Musa's <clears throat> who Allah chose to speak speech and wrote the Torah for him. Okay. Do you blame me for doing deeds with which Allah, he had decree that I should do 40 years before he created me. Do you see it says that I should do? It's a decree that I should do. Try, try, try more to fix it. Put some lips stick on it. This is what the Mohammedan they do. They try to put lips stick. When the guy, the farmers, they put him in the field to scare the birds, what they call him? The decoy? This is what they do to Muhammad. Is it clear now? Uh, look, look, look what the answer now. Uh, hold on. Look what the answer, guys. You are using different translation. I don't know this is not different translation. This is different hadith. You are a certified idiot. This is your prophet saying now different words from the other hadith. And this is the Arabic in both of them. It's so clear. And the other hadith doesn't say that. So now here, they can play games with it. And if you are saying the translation is false, well, that will go back to you because you are proving again my point that Muslims always lie about their translation. Do you see it? And we can show you tons and tons of reference. What about the other hadith? A person of you will do the act of people of heaven and then what Allah he wrote for him will take action and he will do the action of hell and he enter hell. Stupid is amazing. Now let us go to the person. His name is what? <coughs> let us see this one. <coughs> no. All right. We have Mr. Al Walid here. He said, and this is a smart Muslim trying to you know to help to help his prophet. Look what he said. There is difference between destiny and fate. Well, this is genius. There's difference between destiny and fate. Hmm. Tell me why your God, he destiny himself to be killed. What even is death is an eternal God. First of all, can you show me the verse that it says that God, he destined himself to be killed in the Bible? <clears throat> can you show me that? You are a fraud like your prophet. Secondly, 
you just prove to me again that the Quran is a false book. Why? If there is a destiny and there is something fate, I want you in front of everybody to tell me what the destiny is in Islam and what is fate in Islam. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use the word fate in the search engine and the word destiny in the search engine and let people see how we laugh at you when Muslims try to defend. Okay. Let us go here. I will type the word fate. It's your fate to be spanked today, Abdul. Remember, it's you who say there is difference between fate and destiny. This is your Islamic website. I'm not going to use somebody else to witness for your lies. Kabich, I'm not going to do that. Hmm. This is fate. Do not take vows for vows has no effect against fate. You cannot change it. Okay, what about destiny? Can we change destiny? Let us search for uh, destiny. <laughs> oh boy. I feel sorry for Muhammad, by the way. The same hadith, exactly. The same word, destiny and fate for the same hadith. So Muslim agree. You see, this is the same hadith. Here it says destiny, there it says fate. So fate and destiny is one in Islam, and you are a fool. Are you with me? Are you? You are not with me. You are in trouble. Potato. So they try to play with the definitions and work. It's so clear, Adam saying to Moses, says, do you blame me? Which means you can't blame me. Why you can't blame me? Because what I did, I've been forced to do. You see, when I say to you, can you blame me for doing a deed which Allah had decreed? How clear we can make it? Adam saying you cannot blame me so can we say to Adam you you commit sin and because of you you cannot this is a predestiny it was a decree written even 40 years before my creation did Muhammad agree with that yes then the Abdus they come with some lipstick and they start putting lipstick over the, 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 the story to make it look nicer This is why Muhammad used to put Islander three times. And then they say to you, well, how come Jesus, he destiny for himself to be killed? Where it says he destiny? Did he call the Roman and say, here, Roman, come arrest me? Did he say to the Jews, hey, you should kill me? Where? You are just a fool. Desperately trying to do what you are saying and look what happened now based in what the Quran and your prophet saying the Jews they killed Jesus because of destiny and Jesus was killed because of destiny so it's in your religion not in mine are you seeing people how Muslim they do harm to their own cult when they try to defend based on this if a person he killed he killed because simply it was a destiny. If a person he steal, he steal because it's a destiny. If he a person he do fornication, it was a destiny. So when the Jews, they killed Jesus, it was a destiny. Even when the Muslims, they shoot their arrow or they use their sword, it was a destiny. This is why the Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلْتْ وَمَا رَمَيْتْ وَإِنَّمَا اللَّهُ رَمَى I did not throw my arrow, it was Allah who threw it. You did not kill them. 
It was a destiny. You killed them not, but Allah killed them. But the one who killed them is the Muslims. Translation saying, and when you throw, you did not throw. It was Allah who threw your arrow. Do you see it? And the Quran says, not even one bad thing can happen in this earth, except it's a predestiny by Allah and by the permission of Allah. Look how many verses in the Quran. Nothing bad happened to any person except it's a decree of Allah. And this is Quran, chapter 57, verse number 22. What you will say now, the Quran is lying? Are you saying your God does not have control over the future? A Muslim, he starts thinking, he scratches his ass. What does this have to do with control? God, he gave us a free will. It was a gift from him. This is why Jesus says in Matthew 7, Not everyone, he said to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who do his will, which means you can choose to do your own will. In Islam, you cannot have your own will. So are you saying that God, you don't have control of the future? <laughs> so look, in the beginning, he wanted to say that Jesus have control in the future to prove me wrong. Now he switched against it. Do you see how they play games? Oh, okay, so are you saying Jesus, he did not order them to kill him? So he don't have control of the future? <laughs> Actually, additional proof that Allah is a fraud, that he cannot find one follower of him. He have a little IQ. You just destroy yourself. And then he says, is he not strong enough? Is that why he need to be three in one? Look at the genius. Hey, Abdul, I will go with you about strong and weak. Three in one. So why Allah he say we? Isn't he strong enough when he say I? You Muslim you say, Allah he say we? Because he like to be majestic. So Allah obviously he don't feel strong enough to be one. He like to be we. Jesus, when they came to capture him, Peter, he took his sword and he cut the ear of the soldier. Jesus, he ordered his disciple, obviously, who is willing to die for his sake, to put his sword down. And he put the ear of the person, the soldier, back, which is a miracle. See how weak my Jesus? But your prophet, he asked his cousin, to sleep in his bed and he was nine years old so he can escape you see how coward he is risking the life of a child they are so desperate and by the way about the three and one isn't it your god he said that jesus is three and one in the same time you idiot obviously they have no answer Nothing can be fell down on you. It's a decree from Allah. So if I kill a person, it was a decree for me to kill you. If a man he raped a woman, it was a decree from Allah to rape her. And we just showed you the videos of Sheikh Mufti Mink saying that the person who is a thief, he should be punished for his theft. He said to the caliphate, why you want to punish me for something I did do because it's a decree? What is the logic of that? Did he say, no, this is not a decree? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined. My deeds were already written by Allah. Did you see the predestined? So the poor guy, he's a thief because Allah, he can decide to make him a thief. <laughs> so he's saying to the caliphate, 
why you are going to punish me for being a thief? It was a pre if it is a predestiny. Here's what we believe: it was a predestiny that I will be a thief. Are you that Abdul? Are you going to say the Sheikh is a Christian prince? He's lying. Why you want to punish me if it was a predestiny that I will be Robin Hood? How can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you would. It's a quite a good argument, Abdul. Are you there? It's a quite a good argument if you want to think about it. It's a very quiet good argument. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Allahu Akbar. So now the thief, he predestined to be a thief. The rapist predestined to be a rapist. The criminal, he predestined to be a criminal. And now the caliphate predestined to kill this person. Like what the heck with this religion? So Islam is a joke. Allah is playing with the human. He decides what they will do and then he will punishment for what they do. How stupid this religion can be more than this. But, you know, there is somebody he can help here and he can support the Muslim. He have a higher IQ from the rest. Let us call him. Teredem, teredem. Teredim, 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 teredim. Christian Prince, I told you don't call me. Is that can like how you know it's me who's calling you? I did not even say anything. First of all, the only one who called me at this time is you. Eh? Nobody called you at this time. What about Jibreel? Christian Prince, I told you one many time. It's what the predestiny for me that you call me at this time. Like what the heck? Do you think it's a predestiny? Exactly. And I was destiny for you on YouTube. And you were talking about predestiny. So I know I get you, but then it was the predestiny for you to go today. It is October 23rd. To go at this time and to call me. And then I will say to you, Christian Prince, don't call me. Wow. Exactly. I get you, but then. So all of this is the predestiny. It says in the book of Allah. What the heck? Even the word you said now, it's in the book of Allah. I just said what the heck? Exactly. Allah is ready for you. Okay, I will say it again. What the heck? Exactly. Okay, but may, like now I'm adding more. Is it still written? Allah he knew and he decided for you how many will heck will say. Allah he knew and he decided for me how many times I will say what the heck? Uh Zakir, how about how many fart I do a day? Did Allah decree that to me? Christian Prince, I don't want to hear about it. First of all, you are the people right. Secondly, this is not a question. What a stupid cult. This is a religion. If this is a religion, what is a stupidity? Thank you all for being here. It's enough for this. I'm start losing my voice. And I will see you again soon again. Don't forget, please leave your comment. Give a like if you like it. Obviously, there's thousands of people watch it, but nobody cared to give a like. They don't appreciate the work. Okay, give us this like. Come on, do something. Move your hand. It's a decree. It's a decree from Allah to give me a like or to give me this like. It's a decree from Allah to post a comment. It's a decree of Allah to like what I'm doing or not to like what I'm doing. By the way, if your wife cheat on you, it was a decree from Allah. If your neighbor did not pay you back for the money you gave him as a loan, it's a decree from Allah. If you have an accident in the highway, it's a decree from Allah. If what happened to you happened, what happened to Muhammad happened to you, which means your penis is not working, it's a decree from Allah. You can, can we face the decree by buying some Viagra? Viagra is a decree from Allah. Like, what the heck? It's a decree from Allah. Why they are stupid? It's a decree from Allah. What the heck? What? So I leave you with the decree of Allah, which is extremely laughable decree. It's a decree from Allah that I am smart and they are a bunch of fools.
It's a decree from Allah that nobody dare to debate me. It's a decree from Allah that can debate me only face to face because all of them, they are intimidated. They would dare to call me and nobody dare to let me call him. It's a decree from Allah that everybody laugh at this cult. It's a decree from Allah to make your penis endless, which is very painful. I don't want to think about it. You know, your penis is in the other galaxy and the alien chewing in it. And maybe they are making sojourner from it. And you cannot do nothing about it. Go in the space, in the cold space. Where is the penis? Can you see it, brother? Hey, brother, I cannot tell you about even my penis. I cannot see it too. It's endless. Brother, if the wife is next to me, why the penis is there? Allah knows best, brother. It's a decree from Allah. So with the decree of Allah, I let you live today, enjoying this comedy, play it again, download it, share it, and don't forget, it's a decree from Allah if you laugh at it. It is a decree. So don't worry. Be happy. If you laugh at Allah, it's a decree. If you laugh at Muhammad, it's a decree. If you die laughing, it's a decree. The logic of Allah is unbeatable decree of Allah. Thank you. God bless you. And let me remind you again, I have only Christian Prince and Arabian Prophet channels. Other channels are not mine because I keep receiving, you know, questions from people about other channels. There is some, there is a Christian Prince TV. Those people who supposedly like what I do, they play my videos 24 hours a day. This is not my channel. Any other channel beside the Christian Prince and Arabian Prophet is not mine. Are we clear? So, Thank you all for your help, for being here, and we pray to the Lord to open the eyes of the Muslims. Oh, hold on, you can't say to open the eyes of the Muslims. It's a decree from Allah. <laughs> if a Muslim he leaves Islam, it's a decree from Allah. <laughs> if a Muslim call a Christian prince and he leaves Islam, it's a decree from Allah. It's a decree from Allah that I have to go now. Thank you. God bless you. And your Allah is very lovable. And he is the best of comedy. And it was a decree from Allah for me to laugh at him. Deal with it. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And Islam is a scam. Thank you.